Hi, welcome to the Ostomy Advantage. I'm a front farter, <laughs> probably so are you. Well, if you just recently had your surgery and you're home from the hospital, you're probably gonna have a lot of samples and packages coming in the mail. Bags after bags after bags. <laughs> oh my God, what do I do? Well, the answer is coming up next. If you just recently had your surgery, I'm sure they sent you home with some samples of different colostomy or ileostomy products to use. And uh, I'd suggest at first, if you just got home recently, probably stick with what you know, at least for a little while. Because soon enough, you'll be getting all kinds of samples in the mail and uh, at least from several different companies. And if you're smart, you'll go online and hook up with some of the other companies and ask them for samples. They'll be glad to send them to you. It's mainly because they're looking for lifetime memberships. You know, if you have a permanent ostomy, you're gonna be buying their products for the rest of your life. So uh, they really want your business. So they'll be sure to send you free samples for the asking. So what kind of bags and products do you need and what kind do you need to really use? Well, it's really just a matter of taste and also a matter of, of expense. Some of the bags, I mean, they, they, some of them are quite fancy. Uh, some are one piece, some are two piece, some are uh, a lot cheaply made <laughs> and so, some are uh, more expensive and pretty, pretty sophisticated. It's just a matter of what works for you. But don't be afraid to ask for samples and don't be afraid to try them out. It's best to try them out while you're still at home before you get back to your busy life at work or, or playing with the kids in the yard. Find out what works for you now before all that comes. Well, one of the first questions is, what kind of closure do you want at the bottom of your bag? Now, I'll go ahead and tell you right up front. Uh, my wound care nurse at the hospital suggested that I get the bags that don't have a drain spout at all, just a closed in bag. Well, <laughs> after I went for my second surgery, I advised the wound care nurses, you are telling people wrong. At least it was wrong for me. If your bag gets kind of full and, uh, and you're supposed to just take it off and throw it in the trash, if it's full up to the attachment ring, if it's a two part bag, how are you gonna get the thing off without spilling it? I mean, I, it just ain't gonna work. And you don't always have a convenient trash can around when you need one. And so uh, it seemed to be better to me uh, to use a regular bag with a drain spout on it because I can find restrooms a lot better than I can find just a, a handy trash can. Plus, I just don't think I wanna be throwing my poop bags in everybody's trash can everywhere I go. You know what I mean? I don't want them throwing their poop bags in my trash cans at my house. So, you know, it's just a matter of taste, I guess, or smell. But you just gotta decide. Uh, so I think you really want a drainable bag, but there's several different kinds. For the most part, it boils down to two. There's gonna be different types of bags with Velcro or something similar to Velcro at the bottom. Or there's the ones with just a straight pouch with nothing at the bottom and you just roll it up and attach it with a clamp. Now, the first bags I got, they worked with a clamp. And I was pretty satisfied with that at, at first. But one of the things I found just for me is that the clamp seemed to be kind of large and cumbersome. And, uh, and the bags weren't the easiest to clean. And, but I stuck with it only because I didn't think I would trust the whole Velcro thing. I mean, I really did not want the bottom of these bags to come open and drain poop anywhere. So I stuck with the clamps for a while with the uh, open-ended bags. But I finally went along with the uh, whole Velcro idea. And I can tell you, uh, the entire time that I've used them uh, for the last year, it's just been great. The Velcro was the way to go for me. You still may be comfortable with the clamp, and, uh, and there are ways to, to clean them and uh, take care of them, but I just find that by far the easiest is to go with the Velcro. But not all Velcros are the same. I'll show you what I mean. Take this bag, for instance, by Coloplast. It, this is a uh, one piece here, and it has the Velcro at the bottom, but it's a little more complicated. You got these tabs at the bottom. You gotta peel off on both sides. 
it's maybe not the easiest thing to get a hold of and then you roll it down and then then it's got this uh flap down here i haven't quite figured out you know but uh but it opens easily and so you can clean it but then uh what i've found though is uh sometimes i'd get product on the on the outside here and and it wasn't the easiest thing to keep clean i don't know it might work for you but to me it just seemed a little a little too much for me but but it's overall i mean it's a pretty good bag you can get them with a filter on the top we'll talk more about filters in just a second uh, what I ended up sticking with is the Hollister bag. Uh, they call theirs uh, lock and roll on the bottom. It's the one that I use and it seems to work good for me. Uh, basically all you got to do is roll it once, twice, three times and then this Velcro tab just peels right over and snaps into place. And I tell you what, it has always worked for me. I've never had a problem with this coming undone. Although uh, I have to admit, twice in all the time that I've used these, uh, I didn't ever have the Velcro actually come undone, but the Velcro piece itself come unstuck off the bag. So the Velcro remained attached, but the Velcro tab peeled off. And uh, fortunately, at work, I keep a, a, a roll of tape just in case. So I just taped it shut, never had a problem, made it home that day without any issues. Uh, but that, but that, that's out of hundreds and hundreds of bags. I just had two that the, you know, came untaped one time. But I, but I can tell you the Velcro has never come undone, and uh, yeah, it's earned my vote of confidence and thumbs up on that. So that's the kind I use. But there's lots of different options. But basically, it boils down to Velcro or clamps. One of the next options that you're going to have to decide on is uh, one piece or two. Okay, we're not talking about a piece of pie or a piece of cake, but a one-piece bag or a two-piece. And basically the difference is like this. One-piece bag, the wafer is made onto the bag. It's all one piece. The bag's attached, and you once you, once you stick it on, you're done. I mean, it's all one piece. The two-piece bag works this way. The wafer's separate. Uh, in this case, this is a Hollister. It's what I wear. But, uh, but you've got the wafer. You cut out the hole. To match the size of your stoma and you stick this on first which is real easy to see to apply because there's no bag you know obscuring your view at all and then once you have it on then you take the bag and match it up there's a plastic ring on the back and you match that up onto the ring uh, and then just mash it on one end and work it all the way around until it clicks and so it's it's pretty secure uh, it's pretty easy to get on there there is one advantage for sure of using the two-piece uh, actually a couple advantages one being uh, if your bag does get gassed up and it's getting bloated uh, there is these little tabs that's easy to grab you can see right here there's a little tab and you can just simply take it and peel it open just a little bit and push the air out and just push that tab right back now I wouldn't I wouldn't advise doing that you know sitting next to somebody on the bus you want to do it maybe in the restroom or or in the great outdoors because uh, it will tend to have a little odor but uh, but that is one advantage of having a two-piece is the ability to easily burp the bag one more advantage of having a two-piece is it does allow you if your wafer stays on well uh, for you such as maybe anywhere from five to seven days it does allow you to pull off the bag and leave the wafer attached and put a new bag on just to change and put a fresh bag on and so it, it does that have that it does have that advantage but there is one serious disadvantage to having a two-piece bag one being the possibility of being detached when you didn't want it to detach now there are some bags that have like a locking ring uh, tried it it worked pretty good for me, I just didn't like the uh, inconvenience of having to try to snap the ring. Sometimes it's maybe a little tough, or sometimes trying a little tough trying to find the tab and get it to unsnap. But there is the confidence that it locks on and it's less likely to come loose uh, when you don't want it to. And so, so there is an advantage of having the locking ring. Uh, the Hollister bag doesn't doesn't have a locking ring. 
but you do just push it on and it, and it does stay pretty secure. However, uh, when I had, I, I did have both an ileostomy and a colostomy at the same time. And I can tell you the ileostomy is always going to be a much looser or more watery output. And, uh, and, and, I, I, and I counted, there was eight times that uh, during the uh, uh, number of months that I had an ileostomy that I suddenly was so full so quickly that uh, eight different times the bag was so heavy uh, that I was that it, you know at one time I just went to stand up out of the chair and the bag just detached and just fell to the floor one time uh, one time at the dining room table but fortunately it always happened at the house and never at a restaurant or at the grocery store how horrible would that be I don't know um, fortunately it didn't happen to me and so for me because of that experience with the ileostomy I kind of lost confidence in having the two piece so I switched over to the one piece at that time, and that was the solution for me. Uh, for the uh, Hollister bag, it looks exactly the same. The wafer looks the same, except one difference. Uh, they're not snapped together, they're made together. So there's no plastic ring. One advantage of not having the plastic ring is flexibility. It's a lot more flexible uh, when you're wearing it because there's not the hard plastic ring. It's uh, a little more uh, flat uh, under your shirt it, you can conceal it better because it's not that plastic ring that might show an impression on your on your uh, on your shirt that you're wearing uh, so it, so it's definitely a little more stealthy uh, but most of all the biggest advantage is the fact that since it doesn't snap together it's just not gonna come apart the only way that you might would lose this is for the the wafer to come unstuck and fall off of your skin and that is extremely unlikely now this thing once the wafer's on it sticks pretty good there is a possibility of maybe getting a leak uh, but as far as the entire bag just becoming detached and falling right off you know, that's pretty pretty rare to slim to none at all so uh, I feel real confident using the one piece so once I got my ileostomy reversed and uh, now I'm just uh, on, on my full-time colostomy I've stuck with the one piece and I have found that just gives me a lot more confidence and uh, now there is a disadvantage of not having the little tab here where I can peel it open to burp it uh, but it burps just as easily I can't do it as indiscreetly I definitely have to go to the bathroom uh, but when I go to the bathroom all I do is just take the tab at the bottom and of course it'd be rolled up and velcroed all I gotta do is just raise it up and if there's any product up here at the end, I just kind of work it down and then just go ahead and burp the bag, roll the Velcro back, and I'm good to go. You know, so it's raise the end, work the product down, burp it, and close it. Pretty quick, pretty simple, uh, not, not hard to do at all. And so, uh, so although it's uh, just maybe a half step longer, you know, to burp the bag, but what I find and what I gain with confidence of having the one piece and knowing that it's just not going to detach and fall off, to me, it's well worth uh, the extra little half step to burp the bag. And so try it, one piece, two piece, see what works best for you. The next thing to consider are filters. Have a filter or maybe go filter free. Well, there's all kinds of different shapes and sizes and styles and methods of having filters on the bag. For the most part, they all work about the same, to be honest with you. None of them work great. For the most part, when you, when you first put the bag on that first day, you might get a good full day's use out of the filter. Uh, but what I find is by the time you go to bed the first night, if you, get, if you have any output at all overnight, which I tend to have a lot of output in the middle of the night, use about one o'clock in the morning, uh, it cranks up. Uh, but if you have any output at all overnight, uh, as you're laying on your back, things are not gonna fall down because of gravity. Uh, things will just kind of spread out evenly. Uh, you'll have output at the bottom of the bag and unfortunately also at the top of the bag. And then you're laying on the bag, you're rolling around in bed. And so the filter is going to get covered, it's going to be clogged, and you're just going to have to start burping the bag after that. So I don't care how good the filter works the first day, usually after the first night, it's done. So you're going to be burping your bag anyway. So I still find uh, it's still worth it to get the filter, even if you get just the one day's use out of it. 
it's it's worth it if you're not having to go to the bathroom several extra times a day just to burp the bag. So uh, I'd suggest having a filter. Some of them work better than others, but like I said, for the most part, after the first night, it's done. Okay. There are, out there, 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 there are a lot of other products that you have to use when you change out your bag. Some you might like and some you don't, but let's have a quick look at them and see what you can choose from. One of the things that you may have to use is a stoma powder, like this. It comes in a little bottle. And uh, there's lots of different brands. Some of them have a little di bit of difference in their ingredients, but they're all basically for the same thing, is to absorb moisture. As moisture on your skin will eventually break your skin out underneath your wafer, underneath your bag. And so you wanna get a good powder, uh, but for the most part, you only need it if you're having breakouts. Uh, when I had the ileostomy, I found that I had to use the powder pretty much every single time I changed the bag. But if you have a good barrier spray or wipe, then uh, you might not need the powder at all. We'll get that, get that in just a second, but do keep the powder, have it, just in case you need it. But if you do have little red dots and a breakout, you're going to need to have the powder. One of the other things that you're going to need is a very good prep wipe or spray. There's all kinds of different different brands, and and you can you some of them are like on a sponge or, or like a little uh, uh, a little tissue, a little folded wipe in there that's moisturized in there. It's that's what most of them are, but there's also sprays. And uh, when I first came home, I, I had a spray uh, by Adapt from from uh, Hollister. It worked pretty good, except it tended to clog the bottle. You couldn't spray it too many times and it would dry and get clogged in the bottle. Then they changed the formula and then it was too watery, which is something you need to look for in whatever barrier spray you use. Uh, the first spray was good, it stuck on, but then again, it was difficult having a good even coverage. When they changed the formula, then it was a little too watery. You sprayed it and it would tend to run and drip and it took forever to dry. Uh, but there's different brands, different kinds. Uh, I'm still sticking with Hollister, it's just my current favorite. Uh, and this is their newest formula. It's called Adapt. Uh, it is a, a barrier wipe. The model number is 7917. And this, this skin protective wipe or preparation wipe is superb. It really works. Here, so it's like this. You open it up it's just a it's just a tissue in there you know kind of like a glass cleaner wipe it's got the uh, uh, the preparation formula in there and you just wipe it on and I'm telling you this really works it dries very quickly and it leaves a clear it almost looks like a thin layer of saran wrap on your skin you can see it sheen and gloss and it actually will peel off you you remember when you was elementary school and you used to put Elmer's glue in your fingers and let it dry and just so you could peel it off same thing. It looks just like that. It really leaves a good layer behind and it puts that barrier between the wafer sticking directly onto the skin. It's sticking onto this prep wipe formula instead of directly to your skin. And so you got to have a good prep. Otherwise, you're just asking for your skin to break out into little red rash bumps. You don't want that. Here's another item that you'll probably have to use. It's a barrier ring. Pretty much each, each different company, they all have their own. They're pretty much all the same. This one just, this is called an Eakin ring. And uh, this one's from Coloplast, and this is a Hollister one. They're, they're all pretty much the same kind of thing. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, depending on the brand that you use, they come in different thicknesses. But it looks like a, a little rubber donut. And it's got a, uh, it's got a cover on either side. You can peel that off. And then what you do is you shape it yourself to the size of your stomach. You just kind of bend it out there and you can stretch it to get to this. You don't have, have to have the exact size, but you get the approximate size so it fits neatly around your stomach. And you just stick it right onto your skin, right around the stomach. And what this does, it kind of does a couple different things. Uh, one is it, it makes a really good tight seal under your skin. Uh, your wafer will stick very tightly onto this. Uh, it helps prevent leaks from getting up under your wafer and getting to your skin. Uh, it adds that extra barrier. 
uh, it also absorbs moisture. You'll find that after you've worn it a few days, it will tend to it will tend to swell and slowly start breaking down after a few days uh, from absorbing the moisture and keeping it off your skin. Uh, and so uh, uh, I have found that there is one other reason for having it. It's actually the reason why I wear one every single time I change my bag. Uh, because of my really good skin prep wipes by, by Adapt, I, I really don't need this to keep me from breaking out. Uh, however, what I have found on my particular stoma tends to go a little concave on the bottom half. You know, when, it, when it's producing, when that muscle's working, when that intestine's working, it tends to pull in and it goes a little concave. And I've actually had it pull away from the wafer. And so because of, because of that, this adds a little more thickness up under the wafer. It adds just a little more, uh, a little filler in between the wafer and the skin. So it allows, allows the, the muscle to pull in without pulling away from the wafer. It just fills that gap in between. And I have found it works extremely well. And uh, in all the time now that I've used uh, a barrier ring along with a really good prep wipe, I've not had not one single breakout ever, ever since I've been using it. And so definitely a way to go. Here's another type of barrier that you might be using or might have to use if you want to. They look like this, they come in different shapes. Basically what this is for is for when you have your wafer on, if you need that added security or protection, keep it from peeling up, well, they, they make these for round barriers uh, or, or round wafers. They also make them for square wafers. They, they come in different shapes. And uh, basically what this is for is once you got the wafer on, these will stick on around the outside in order to give you just a little bit added protection uh, from your wafer peeling up off of your skin. Uh, I don't use these at all. I, I've tried them once, uh, but what I found it actually, uh, for whatever reason, it, it tended to break me out. Um, I know uh, sometimes what they do is they suggest if you're going to go swimming uh, that you use these to help keep it on, keep your wafer on to make sure it doesn't detach. It's just a little e extra mental security. Uh, I can't really uh, suggest that you use it or not. I just, I just don't use them. I tried it the once and I just had a reaction to it. So I just don't use them at all. But they are available and they do come to different shapes and sizes for all the different kind of wafers. And if, uh, if you need that added confidence, then by all means, put it on there so you'll feel, you'll feel like you can go you know, uh, do some athletics, you can do some football, maybe track and field, uh, especially if you're getting sweaty, sometimes it may cause you to start detaching quite quicker. And so uh, if you need it, by all means, go for it. Another product that you're gonna need when you're changing out your bag is a remover wipe. What this is, it's a remover wipe that's used to get the adhesive off your skin. You can, you can use wipes, it'll get some stuff off, but okay, it only gets the poop off, but it's not gonna remove the adhesive. Especially if you use the barrier rings. The barrier ring for sure uh, if you've had it on for a number of days, the barrier ring will tend to uh, uh, leave a little residue behind. Or especially if you've had it on for a few days, the barrier ring actually starts to break down from the moisture. And I've had a few times when I go to remove the wafer off, parts of the barrier ring will actually tear off and, and stay behind. And so you're going to have to have some to get the adhesive off your skin to be able to cleanse your skin really clean uh, before you put the prep wipe on. Uh, to put your next new wafer on. And so, uh, again, I currently use Hollister. This is Adapt, a universal remover wipe, number 7760. And, uh, and I've tried different ones and they all seem to work pretty good. Uh, really about the main difference is not so much how well they work as far as the formula, but, is, but it's what the formula is put onto. Uh, this one happens to be, uh, here I'll show you, it happens to be a little bit, uh, it's like a little, uh, kind of like a little scouring pad. Uh, it's just a, it's a little square pad, and it's kind of thick. And uh, I like its thickness, as you can kind of get in there and wipe real good, and, and you don't want to scrub real hard right next to your stomach because you'll cause it to bleed. But you can scrub your skin pretty good going back and forth, and uh, and it, with it being thick, it holds the product, holds a lot of product in it. It doesn't dry out real quickly. And so usually just one or two of these, I'll get the whole area 
very, very, very clean and get all the uh, adhesive off. But you got to have a good remover. Uh, some of them come in a wipe. Some of them come uh, like more in a little piece of sponge. Uh, I happen to find, I just like the texture of this one the best. Uh, so, so far, Hollister's just been what I came home from the hospital with and it's what I've stuck with and continues to work for me. But try out all the samples. Uh, they're going to send you a lot of things. Don't be, don't be afraid to try them out. You may just find you go a whole new direction. Okay, this is some products that you will definitely want to use and your family and your friends and your neighbors will thank you. It's deodorants for your bag. As you probably have already figured out, Ostamide is they don't smell very good. And so there's different types of products that all the different companies carry that, that you can use to deodorize and or also lubricate your bag so they smell a lot better. Here's just a couple examples. Uh, this is one from Coloplast. Uh, here's Adapt again from Hollister. Uh, Hollister also makes this one. It's, a, it's called M9. Uh, you, first off, you just need to decide uh, if you want a lubricant or just a deodorant. Uh, the advantage of the lubricant is uh, it lubricates. Uh, once you put it in the bag, you can kind of spread it around, and it kind of helps prep the bag so that the uh, poop will tend to slide down to the bottom. It makes it easier to empty. Uh, I have found that, uh, again, the uh, Hollister one Adapt is, is my favorite one. Uh, it's, this is the uh, packets is number 78501 uh, it's a lubricant and it's a deodorant I find that once you've uh, when you go to empty your bag it does have a kind of a pleasant smell uh, if you've ever had compost with a lot of rotting fruit and vegetables in it, it kind of smells like rotting fruit okay you think that doesn't sound great, but think of the alternative, what you're smelling without it, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of a sweet, kind of a, a fruity kind of smell to it. And uh, it's, it's really pretty pleasant, to be honest with you. But it takes uh, one of these whole packets every single time you empty the bag. Or you can get it in a large bottle. And, uh, but I find that uh, for my insurance, for instance, I can only get uh, a... a uh, three bottles for three months so I expect one bottle to last a whole month for me really I couldn't hardly get one bottle to last uh, much over a week because you have to use a fair amount of the product and so so it, it is a uh, cost disadvantage but it does really work and it does smell pretty good uh, what I'm currently using is M9 uh, the uh, Adapt and the M9 uh, both come in a large bottle and uh, the Adapt comes in a large bottle or the packets. Uh, the M9 uh, you can get in a large bottle or these little dropper bottles. So what I do is, uh, this is the one I currently am using. Uh, I keep, these, keep one of these in my pocket everywhere I go all day. And, uh, and pretty much one little bottle of this will, will last well over a week. I, I, I've yet to uh, use up one whole bottle of this. <laughs> so I don't know how long it lasts. Uh, but uh, now the instructions say you only need like four to twelve drops. All right, all right. They're probably stretching that. I tend to use maybe thirty drops or better. But even at that, that's a whole lot less than I have to use on the Adapt. Now the disadvantage is the M9 does not have any uh, sweet smelling aroma. It actually doesn't have any scent at all. It's just meant to take away the smell, but it doesn't mask it with any other kind of scent. And so, so there still will be a little smell, a little odor. And for a while I was thinking, I don't think this is really working. Then I stopped using it. Oh yeah, I could tell right away. Yeah, it was definitely working. It doesn't reduce it completely all the time, but it definitely uh, reduces it a lot. And, uh, and it's, when you're looking at cost effectiveness, this goes a long, long ways. And so for the price, for me, this is the way to go. One other thing that you're gonna need when you're changing out your bag is some type of wipes. Now you could just use toilet paper, but I tend to find, depending on the toilet paper, it tends to stick to your skin, or maybe if you have a hairy belly like me, and, and, uh, and you always have to you know, trim it and shave it down each time you change your bag, uh, the toilet paper will tend to come apart and it's just not the best thing to clean with. So I use baby wipes, but you have to be careful with the wipes. You don't want anything that has uh, any kind of strong chemicals or fragrances or anything in it. 
because uh, you're going to be wiping on and near and around your stoma and, uh, and you definitely want to have something that's really gentle without all those other things in there. Uh, what I happen to use is one that's just called simply baby wipes. Uh, I get it from Walmart. I don't really even know who makes it, but it's alcohol free, hypoallergenic, and, uh, and it's unscented. And also, it's really cheap. I actually have gone and compared uh, how many cents per individual sheet uh, that it costs because I am looking and estimate over the rest of my life how much money I got to spend on all this and, uh, and these are very very cheap per sheet uh, compared to most wipes and it's actually uh, the best one to use so thumbs up high recommendation for this one and don't be shy look down here at the comments below and see if somebody else maybe have a great suggestion or maybe telling you something you should avoid uh, if you found something that really works for you or really didn't Please put it in the comments below so we can all learn from you and, uh, and help us find the right products that works just for me and just for you. So happy hunting. We'll see you next time on the Ostomy Advantage.